So coupling to databases we know from the first part of this presentation is realized using a TQ interface for example provided by Thermocalc and the respective thermodynamic and mobility databases. The phase diagram then is linearized and uh, parameterized for a time loop running over the phase field equations, the temperature equations and the concentration equations and the result of this kind of iteration are microstructures in 2D or if you've got a lot of time also in 3D. Let's go a little bit more into details of the use of thermodynamic data in the MICRES. So the first thing is we can calculate the local deviations from equilibrium, so the differences in the Gibbs energies, and uh, this makes the delta G you already know. The next thing we can calculate the redistribution of the elements between the different phases, uh, which gives us the so-called segregation and the next is to use the fusion data from the mobility databases which gives us the full diffusion matrix in the system and last but not least we've got the enthalpy which can be taken from the databases and provides the latent heat uh, associated with the phase transformation and which entered then the temperature solver. One important issue is that uh, we also can calculate the critical undercooling, so we can calculate the local deviation from equilibrium and the driving force for the nucleation, and we can specify a critical undercooling temperature, and if this exceeded, a nucleus is placed into the system. It is important to note that uh, nucleation cannot be treated really at the scale of the individual atoms forming the initial nucleus, uh, but in the multiphase field model we use a classical nucleation theory where we've got a distribution of particles with different radii and depending on the radii, each of the particles provides a potential nucleation site and the smaller the particle is, the higher nucleation is needed to activate. So these uh, different particles are positioned in this area, in the calculation area, which is missing here, uh, and uh, then are potential nucleation sites and once the process conditions, the local conditions of temperature and concentration fulfill this criterion, a new nucleus is set in this area. Here is one of the examples for a directional solidification of a simple steel grate. What you see are the different phases so the phase fields for the liquid in red, for the ferrite in orange, and for the austenite in the cream type color. Actually we have more than three phase fields here, so it's not only liquid, ferrite and austenite, but you may notice that we've got two different oriented ferrite grains. So we have got a phase field for the ferrite grain one, and also another phase field for the ferrite grain number two. And then you can also look at these simulations in the light of the different alloy elements. If you look at it in the light of the carbon distribution, you see that the carbon is segregated into the interdendritic liquid and the manganese as well. To make it a little bit more animated, we here see a solidification animation of a steel alloy where you see a dendrite forming which is misoriented and the growth in the temperature gradient leads this dendrite to be overgrown by those 
which are in the preferred direction. It's interesting to see how the diffusion of carbon proceeds far into the solid because carbon is a very small element and diffusing interstitially uh, and thus very fast. If we continue this kind of animation, we will end up with a very homogeneous carbon distribution due to this fast diffusion of carbon. And the scale bar here will uh, swap to another color in order to visualize the differences at all at the very end. And what you see is uh, A more or less homogeneous distribution but if you look at it a little more, bit more in detail uh, then you see that there are tiny spots of red where there is very few carbon available. We can look have a look at the same simulation in the light of manganese and if you see the simulation and then you see again the same situation of grain selection and so on. However, if we look at the diffusion of the manganese, then we see a large difference because manganese does not diffuse as fast and so there is only a small penetration of manganese into the solid. And most of the manganese is segregated into the interdendritic regions. We can continue that as well, and in this case we will not end up with a homogeneous distribution of manganese, but we have some spots, some bright yellow spots with very high manganese concentration, and more or less all the manganese is segregated into the interdendritic regions. So the reason for these tiny yellow spots and uh, these tiny red spots with low carbon cannot be understood if we just consider a system iron carbon manganese. But actually the, the simulations have been performed on a system iron carbon manganese silicon phosphorus and sulfur. And you see that also in the sulfur, you see high concentrations of sulfur in the interdendritic regions. And the tiny spots seen in the previous slide correspond to so-called manganese sulfides forming in the interdendritic regions. Solidification is not anything important for microstructures, but many things happen later on during solid state transformations. Uh, there, is, there are options to model also solid state transformations with multi-phase field methods. We will uh, go on to these kind of models in a separate lecture.